Welcome to this video. In this video, I want to take a tour behind the scenes of Academind.com with you. We'll have a look at the core technologies used by us, which is Vue.js with Next.js and Storyblock as a content management system. That's really interesting. We'll take a look at this. And I want to explain how we built this website and why it works the way it does work. So let's start. So here's academind.com, the starting page of it. And if you haven't visited it yet, definitely do so. You can navigate around, read our articles, watch our videos. This is how it works. Now let's take a look behind the scenes. This is the project, the source code of academind.com. It's a Next.js project and therefore a Vue.js project. And of course, the heart of it basically is the pages folder. Here, all the pages of our application, of our web page, are set up. We got that learn page, which is our most important one. You reach it by clicking on learn, or the content is actually also shown on the starting page. And then there we got all our topics. And for each topic, we got our content pieces, like articles with a video, or just an article, or just a video. And this is the structure you see here, the learn page, with a nested topic page, which in turn has the content page. The topic page, for example, is the page showing all these content cards. So this page here, that would be the topic page, this index.view file. Now here I'm, as I said, using Next.js and Vue.js therefore. And as you can see in the code already, I'm of course using loads and loads of custom components, which are stored in the components folder as in any Next project. Now, here we got tons of components for all the different things which are rendered and displayed on the screen. And unfortunately, I can't really make that source code available. But here I just built tons and tons of components. Each component is a single file view component, single dot uh, view file, so to say has its own template, which may consist of other components or basic HTML building blocks, has some script logic here, and then the styling, which is attached to a given component. This is the core structure, nothing spectacular, really just how a Next and Vue application works, but might still be interesting to see this behind the scenes. Now, besides all these pages, and I will come back to how we fetch the data in a second, Besides all these pages, if we have a look at the next config, you see I use a couple of modules, Axios to make HTTP requests, but then also PWA to conveniently turn this into a progressive web app. We of course also track you with Google Analytics because we want to know how you work on that page, how you behave on that page, what you like and what you don't like. So this is the code. And obviously we could now dive super deep into that and analyze all the code I wrote here. But ultimately, these are just view components. The interesting part, in my opinion, is the data. How do we store and manage our data? Did we write the backend for this on our own? How is it loaded into this page? And how do we ensure that it's search engine optimized? So first of all, we didn't create our own backend. We're using Storyblock instead. Storyblock is an API-based headless content management system, which means it's a content management system that gives you an admin interface, a nice UI, where you can create your content, write your articles, link your videos, and so on, and which you then fetch, where you then fetch the content via an API request. Unlike WordPress, where the views, the frontend, is really baked into the system, Storyblock is a headless system. It focuses on the data, on your content, and it follows a component-driven approach so that you can really clearly define how content looks for you. How does an article look like? Does it have a title, a creator, a preview text? You can set all of this up and we will take a look at our Storyblock project in a second. And you can then fetch it in your next frontend by sending a HTTP request to, your, to a certain API endpoint given to you by Storyblock to get your data in the form of an array full of JSON data or full of JavaScript objects in the end. 
And then here on the front that I just transform it a little bit and ultimately store in this case here, the loaded topic, because remember, this is this topic page here and the content for this topic. It's stored here in content elements. So this is then just data coming from the back and from story block, uh, a little bit transformed. And then I use it here to simply loop through, for example, all my content elements, create this custom component for each of them and pass the information, which I extract from that story block data to that component. This is how the data is rendered to the screen with my own frontend, totally built by myself, not coming, not made available by Storyblock, but populated with data stored on Storyblock. Now, why did we choose Storyblock and not create this on our own? Because here we don't have to manage anything. The database is managed for us, security is managed for us, the caching is done for us and it's really, really fast. So they're doing a great job when it comes to caching data. All of this is managed for us and all we have is just a nice UI where we can edit our content in a really convenient way. Now, before I dive into this, just a brief word about search engine optimization. Since this is a next step, we can pre-render it and we are actually pre-rendering it in a static way, which means that we render all the routes to HTML files at the end of our development process. So we regularly publish new versions of our page where all pages are pre-rendered as HTML pages. And once you visit them, you're back in a single page application, but we're not running this on a server. We're also not running it as just a single page application, but all the pages are pre-rendered. The config for this is written in the next config.js file here. There in the end, we have a function where we make an API request to the story block API and then transform the data to extract all the different pieces for the different pages we got to then really render all the pages dynamically, even the pages which we haven't hard coded in here, but which are only defined by the content on the back end. That's why we fetch the content so that we know which pages need to be rendered. And then all of that is done here so that we always ship a pre-rendered version so that the Google crawler sees what you see and that you also quickly get a page and don't have to wait for it to fetch and load in your browser. So this is how we do search engine optimization. But back to Storyblock, how does this work? If you log in, and you can create an account for free. If you check the pricing, there is a starter package available for free. Got everything you need to get started. If you start, you will see this screen. Story block things in spaces and you could translate space with project or collection of content. Like here, our Academine space. There we have the general dashboard with the tokens that are required to make these HTTP requests, the different subscription uh, packages, and then the heart, the content. Now in our case, we got the learn section and then we got the different topics here as content pieces, if you wanna put it like this. And each content piece here has the different content elements like articles and videos and so on as subfolders, you could say. But the topic itself is just some content defined by us. If you click on compose here, you can see, and you may ignore this error by the way, we'll fix it in a second. If you click on compose, you see, this is how we configure a topic with a title, an image, an image icon, a explanation video, which is linked, a short explanation text. And this is not defined by Storyblock. They're not forcing us to define our content in this way. This would be really inflexible. Instead, we're using the second big feature of Storyblock, components. You define your own components, so the structure of your data, if you want to call it like that, for your content. Like for example here, the topic, that is what we just had a look at. Topic is a component where we simply defined that we will have these properties. If you think in JavaScript object, these would be your object properties and you can easily add a new one like this, enter a name and then pick the type of value you plan on storing. And depending on which type you pick here, the story block UI will help you. Like for example, if you choose image here, you will get an upload button and the image will automatically be stored in an assets folder for you on Storyblocks servers. So you don't have to manage that. 
you pick number, you can only enter numbers. If you pick markdown, you get a text editor with some formatting controls. So this is how this works and how you can work with components. Now, besides these root components like topic or content would be another one, we also got nested components like content text. This is simply something like a nested object in a JavaScript object. Now, content text only has text, so maybe not the best example, but content image is a component where we manage our images in our articles. We have the image property, which is of type image, which gives us this nice upload button. We define our alt text and then the dimensions. And all of that can be fetched from the front end and can be used to render it correctly there. And we do use it like that. We do use that alt text as the alt text we render to the screen. And we do use the link that is ultimately stored here for the uploaded image on the front end too. Let's have a look at this. And let's also fix that error that we had this error message in the middle here. Let's have a look at the Web Dev Trends 2018 article. There we still got that error. And that really is just stemming from a feature Storyblock offers us. We can connect our page to that Storyblock UI so that we get a live preview of what we're working on. And for that, I'll start my app here in development mode. So locally on my machine, I'm not connecting it to the live version because I won't see changes there because we have to publish them before they appear there. But for the development version, we see the changes right away. And if I now reload that page, you see a preview here. And even better than that, set up correctly, you can click into a field and start editing it. And this actually is also possible for images. And here we see that content image component I showed you a second ago. Here you see some of the fields are filled out. And for example, because I chose the type image for that image property, we got an upload button or we can choose one from the collection of images we have on that account. So this is how this works and how we can conveniently work with the content. And again, this is in development mode. My project is configured to automatically show in development mode content in the development mode of our project. But once I hit publish, it would also be visible on the live version of the website, so academind.com. And all of that configuration stuff and how you connect your project to Storyblock can be found in the Storyblock docs. And you can, of course, find a link in the video description. This is why we work with Storyblock. It's really easy. We can just focus on the content. We can get a live preview. We can edit our content. We can publish it. And that's the coolest feature for us maybe besides the speed, which is awesome. We work with components. And we work with components in the front end too. And you don't just work with components if you're working with Next or Vue or Angular or React. You can basically think of any web page consisting of components. It doesn't matter if you use a framework that calls it component. If you got reusable building blocks, which you use in your web page, be that a single page app or a server rendered one, or be that a mobile app, you probably have reusable pieces of content and Storyblock thinks just like your front end, which is why it is a really good fit for us and which is why we use it. And I hope with that you got a, an overview of how we built academite.com. It's a next view application with a powerful backend that is exactly tailored to our needs, but not because we pay so much money to Storyblock, but because it's how Storyblock works. So if you are building a comparable project, you might want to give it a try. Of course, you might also build your own backend or find a different solution that works better for you. But this component based approach is really powerful. And I hope this was a nice brief glimpse behind the scenes of academite.com. If you found this interesting, definitely let me know. And we can, for example, build a somehow comparable project in the future using Storyblock and some frontend like Vue or Next. So hopefully see you there. Bye.